Hi, I'm Cynthia Hunt with the Amarillo Public Library, and today we're going to be learning how to make crocheted baubles. The pattern we'll be using today comes from a book in our Amarillo Public Library collection called Boho Crochet. The pattern we're using is on page 60 of the book and the official title is Crocheted Christmas Baubles. But I don't think baubles should be limited to just Christmas. We've been playing with them when springtime colors and they look awesome. In the past, what we've been using is a, on our videos for knitting and crochet has been a worsted weight yarn. Today we're going down a size. We're going to be using what is known as either DK, fingering, or sport weight yarn. It's a little bit narrower. You can use a worsted yarn also if it's a very narrow worsted. Worsted kind of runs a gamut. Some are kind of thick, some are kind of thin. You're gonna to wanna to go with kind of thin. And you're gonna need three or four different colors of yarn as well. Some come in really small little balls of yarn. Some come in regular size balls. And some come pretty darn big. So make sure that you get three colors that you like together, or four. And then on your crochet hooks, what you're going to want to get is something that's probably between 3.25 millimeters and 3.75 millimeters. I've been mostly using an E4, which is 3.5 millimeters, and a lot of that is going to depend on whether you can get all of the yarn pulled through a loop without it splitting. If you're having trouble getting that loop through another loop with, or multiple loops without it splitting, then you may need to go up a hook size. And the hook sizes are not just about, they're called millimeters because it's about the width of the barrel of the hook, but they're also differently sized on the hook end itself. So the larger the size, the larger the hook. If you're splitting, go up a size in your hook and that should take care of it. Now, if you are really loose, you may wanna go down a size in your hook to like 3.25 or even a three millimeter hook. But I'm pretty happy with 3.5. It's worked pretty well for both Cindy Wallace and myself. So give that a shot. Another thing that you're gonna need, which I forgot to mention earlier, is a three inch styrofoam ball or a glass or plastic Christmas ornament, which you can use. And we're gonna be using this today. It doesn't, if you're using a colored plastic or colored glass, make sure it's a color that will go with the yarn that you're gonna be using. But this is inexpensive. You can get them on clearance, you can get them online, and it's pretty easy. So you'll need, in addition to those things, you're gonna need a yarn needle and a pair of scissors for cutting your yarn. And that's it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is learn how to make a magic circle. Here's how you do it. Okay, first the magic circle. When starting your magic circle, you're going to need to give yourself a few inches of the cut end left over to give you plenty of yarn to grasp your magic circle once it's done, which doesn't make any sense yet, but it will. And you wanna be able to have enough that you can get a needle on and safely weave in your ends once you're finished. So what you're gonna do is put the cut end on the inside of your hand and you're going to part your little finger, run this, behind your fingers and then make an X and you can put your thumb there just to keep it nice and then you're gonna bring it back around to the front and what you're gonna wind up with is two parallel lines on the back of your hand. Get your crochet hook. I'm using the 3.5 millimeter E4 
hook, but you can use something a little smaller or a little bigger. And if you're doing a completely different project, this will just show you the technique and you'll use whatever the pattern dictates on whatever you're working on. You're going to go under this outer band of yarn, hook the inner band of yarn and bring it under. Then you're going to twist by bringing it towards you and then away from you. Then you are going to hook the yarn on the farthest, the one that's closest to your knuckles, to the closest to your hand, and you're gonna bring it through that other hoop. And sometimes it helps to go on ahead and just let go of the rest of the loop and bring that through, because it's kind of small. And this is the hardest part of the whole darn thing. And there you go, it popped on through. And now I've got a little loop and I've got a little string and I've got, I'm gonna be crocheting with the stuff that's on the skein, not the stuff that is on the cut end. So there is how you make a magic circle. I'm gonna show you a second time. We're going to go around the back make an X and I put my thumb on there to keep them separate and then go back around and I pull it forward and hold it with my little finger. Then you're going to take your hook, hook in down, go under the outermost band, the one closest to your fingertips, hook the other band, twist it, then bring it back over to the back one and yarn over there and bring it through that loop. And this way, you now have your magic circle. See, it actually forms a circle, yay! And you can make it smaller or you can make it bigger depending on what's most comfortable for you. But either way, you've got your magic circle. Now it's time to start crocheting. Once you've gotten your magic circle created, you're going to need to start double crocheting stitches into your magic circle. You're going to need a set of 12. And here's how we double crochet. Okay, so here's how you need to arrange your magic circle. You want to have your cut end of yarn in the direction that you're going to be crocheting so that you'll be crocheting over the cut end as well as the loop that is the magic circle. And you will be using the skein end of your yarn to crochet your double crochet. Now, the first thing you do whenever you're starting a row of double crochet is you chain three stitches. And I usually put my middle finger and my thumb on the base of the knot that is the magic circle so that I can have a nice tension on this loop that's on the barrel. So this is chaining one, chaining two, chaining three. And this counts as your first double crochet stitch in every pattern, unless they tell you different. It is always the chain three is your double cro your first double crochet stitch. So now you've got a double crochet stitch. Now we are going to make an actual double crochet stitch. You're going to come from the front away from you to hook some yarn over the barrel of your crochet hook. Then you're going to bring it under the cut end and the magic loop yarn this way. Hook on to the piece of skein yarn. So now you have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, just on front to back and then down. And always turn your hook down because if you see the end of your hook is shaped kind of like a teardrop with the wide part at the top and the narrow part at the bottom. That's because the loops on your crochet barrel are also going to be shaped like that. So they go through more easily. So with this yarn, you're going to go through these two loops closest to the end of the crochet hook. 
So here we go. And now you've still got two. You've got the one that was already on your barrel and you've got the one you just made. Then you're going to yarn over again and go through both of those. That's why it's double. You did it once and then you did it a second time. That is your second double crochet stitch. So let's do this again. You go from front to back and around. Then you're going to go inside the circle, hook your yarn, then you're going to yarn over again, go through the first two loops, and then yarn over again, go over through those other two loops. Now you've got three, and you can tell that there are three of them. You can move them up and down, and you can tell there's one, there's a second one, and there's the third one. And this is how you see them. And as you start doing double crochet hook, double crochets, this one, the first one will only have one little string of yarn. The others will have two that are on the magic circle. So let's do it one more time. Front to back and then down. Go inside the circle, loop another piece of yarn, loop another piece of yarn once you're out of it, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two. And again, you can see that they are on there and they can move back and forth. There's two pieces of yarn, so now we've got four. And you're gonna keep doing this until you have, make sure you include this first chain of three as one of your stitches. But you can see there's one, two, three, four. You're going to keep double crocheting until you have a total of 12 double crochets on your magic circle. Then I'll show you what to do with that. So you've now got 12 double crochets on your magic circle. And let's count them through. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They're all on there. And you can tell that there's a little stitch marker where that loop was for that 12th double crochet. Because you're not always gonna be able to do an entire thing without something happening that takes you away from it. And if you're going to have to put it down, it's best to put something through that loop, like a safety pin or a stitch marker that can come undone so that you can put your hook back in it because hooks fall out of stuff. They just do. So you want to have it all kept together. So I'm going to put my hook back in there and then I'm going to show you how to close off your magic circle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull on that cut end and it's going to close our magic circle. And you can make it larger, you can make it smaller, whatever you wanna do that looks comfortable for you. And to close off this round, which is the same thing you're gonna be doing on every round of this, is you are going to put your hook through the third chain stitch, that top chain stitch, and you are going to yarn over and pull that yarn through, and then pull it through that last loop. And this closes your circle for round one. And you're gonna take a little bit of scissors and snip, and then to close this off so that it can't come unraveled, you're going to put the cut end, the newly cut end, through that loop and tie it down. And now when you weave in your ends, you're gonna end each end with one of these little loops, which is called a slip stitch. And now you've got a nice center for your wonderful bobble. As you weave in your stitches, it's better to go in the direction of the small end towards the big end of these stitches so that you won't see it. It hides a lot better if you go in the direction of the tops of these stitches where it will start close together just like a teardrop and then get bigger just like this one right here. 
So it starts small, it gets bigger, and that's how you know which direction you're supposed to be going. This also shows you the right side versus the so-called wrong side of your stitches. If you're not seeing these little poles, these little columns, and you're not seeing it small to big, because they'll show face up on the right side. You can see them face up, but you won't when it's turned over. That's how you know you're on the wrong side. Weave on the wrong side, but in the direction of the teardrops falling. So you'll do it this way. And that's how you do the magic circle. And you've now completed round one. Now we're ready to begin our second round of our bauble. So we don't want to do too much that's going to confuse you. We're going to go on ahead and change colors, which is, so pick a color that you like that will go as your next color. And what you're going to do is, I don't want to have all the ends like right in a row on this thing, so I'm not going to start it in the same place each time. I'm going to back off a couple of stitches and I'm going to bring my crochet hook through between two of those double stitches. See how it makes a little triangle there? I'm going to pop it through that triangle and I'm going to hook this yellow yarn through and always turn your hook down so it can go in through a stitch or through a loop a lot more easily without catching on anything. And just like we did last time, what I'm going to do is chain three, and this will be our first double crochet. One, two, three. That is our first double crochet. And I'm going to do a second double crochet inside that same opening. So I'm gonna go under, to have that on top, to have a little loop of yarn over it so I'll have two things on my hook. Dive in, hook that yarn, come back. Now I've got three pieces of yarn on my hook. Yarn over again, go through the first two. Yarn over again, do the second two. And now you've got the first pair on round two. We're gonna do it again but we're gonna go through the next stitch. See where that little triangle is? I'm gonna go down in there, grab the yarn, come back, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, and you can see how there are two pieces of yarn now on that stitch. So I'm gonna do the same thing because I want four, because that means I've done two double crochets. So now I've got three, on my barrel, I'm going to go through the first two, and then I'm going to go through the second two. Now I've got two double crochets in this one and two double crochets in that one. And we're going to go all the way around doing this self same thing. The yarn over, then go in, yarn over, come out, yarn over, go through two, and yarn over, go through two. And do not count this part where you have your slip stitch that's a smaller loop and goes in a different direction, it's perpendicular to the other loops, don't go through that one. Just go through the double crochet stitches. So get your yellow yarn, yarn over, go in, yarn over, come out, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two. And you're just gonna keep doing two in each one of those little triangles between those posts that are your double crochets from the last round. Yarn over, go through the second one. So I now have two, you can count them, one, two. And you can also count by saying there are four pieces of yarn in that stitch. So now I'm going to go to the next one. Do it again. Yarn over. 
over, go through two. And you can tell this one's split a little bit. Sometimes yarn does that. It's okay. What you can do when this happens, there are a couple of things. You can either go on ahead and move it by hand over there, or you can just say, well, the heck with this, and go back to the one that you had before. That's the great thing about crochet. Unlike knitting, where you have to go over and over and over again, you can just undo to the stitch before. And a lot of times, that's all it takes to make it go through just fine. So it's real, real easy to repair mistakes in crochet. So this has got two crochet stitches on it. See, one, two. Now we're gonna do it again. second double crochet and you're going to do this all the way around this side all the way around this round and then you'll finish off again with another slip stitch just like I did in round one so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so now I'm going to do that slip stitch, go through that chain on the first double crochet, which is actually a chain of three. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can get my big fat fingers through it and cut off my end. And then I'm going to bring it back through and tighten it. And now, I have round two done, and we'll go on to round three. Time to break out that third color of yarn because we're about to start round three. So the hard part is over. We're on to round three. We've got a third color of yarn, and where we've got two stitches together, is we wanna to start to the right of a pair of stitches. And we had a pair of stitches inside each of those stitches. And I'm gonna go a little to the right of where I ended so that I don't wind up with everything all in the same place. So see where I have four pieces of yarn in that stitch and four pieces of yarn in this stitch? I'm gonna go right between those. And there's a little space there. I'm gonna pop my little crochet hook in and I'm going to grab my lavender yarn and pull it out and do, let me hear you say it, through chain three stitches. One, two, three, which makes our first double crochet. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to double crochet two more into that same stitch. Not one, but two. So, just like we've been doing, I'm going to go on ahead. I've got, uh, now I've got a little bit lost. Okay. At the end of my yarn got a little bit stove up, so I'm gonna yarn over, go back in, yarn over, come out. Then I've got three things on that hook. I'm gonna yarn over, go through the first two on that hook, and I've got two on there. I'm gonna yarn over and go through the second two. Now I've got two double crochets on there. Let's do it one more time. Go in, come out, 
I've got three pieces of yarn on there. Sometimes I forgot to do that yarn over before I go in and I wind up with two and I have to go back and start over. So you've got three, one, two, three double crochets. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to skip over the next two double crochets that are both in the same stitch and I'm going to go into that hole on the other side of it. Now a lot of times this is starting to look, and it's supposed to, like a granny square. You can tell in a granny square that you have little spaces in between groups of stitches. And that's what we're doing the same thing, only we're doing it a little bit more in the round. So what we're gonna do, we've got our three on there and we're going to yarn over, go in to the, past this next two columns of double stitch, double crochet. And I'm gonna go yarn over, come out, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, go through the second two. And you can see how this starts to make a real granny, uh, granny square type pattern, only this is gonna be more like a granny circle, I guess you'd call it. So now I've got three on there. I'm gonna go through two and then I'm gonna go through two more. But each time when I do a set of three, I'm going to yarn over and then go through the next two double crochets that were in the same stitch. If you don't do them between the ones that were in the same stitch, then you're gonna have trouble because it's not gonna look the same. If you do it this way, it's going to create this really pretty little star-like pattern. And if you don't, it's gonna look like a big lump. So listen to what I'm saying, because it took me a while to figure this one out. And I had help on that. So yarn over, go in past those next two, come out, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go in that same hole, yarn over, go through two, over, go through two. Then you need a third one. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, come out. Yarn over, go through the first two. Yarn over, go through the second two. And you do this all the way around. You keep put, doing three double crochets in each pair, past each, between each pair of double crochet that were in the same stitch on the previous round. There's one, there's two, and they're both in the same stitch. So I start by going yarn over, go in here. Yarn over, come out. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And because it's so much easier to find where those stitches are that you're going in, this gets really fast. So you start having just kind of a lot of fun with it because it's just whoop and you don't have any problems because you know where you're supposed to, because that's the hardest thing to me is learning where to put your end of your crochet hook into the work that you're doing. And with this, it's really easy to learn how and it makes it a lot more fun. So this is why a granny square or these granny ball, uh, these crochet baubles are such a good project for beginning crocheters because you're changing colors so you can tell one round from the next round, which makes it easy. But because with these double crochets, you can see the big hole that you're supposed to go into and you can tell which place, not between these two, but between these two because there's a bigger hole there. So we have one, two, three, and you can count them really easy. So there we go. I'm gonna go on ahead and go around and then we'll do a slip stitch at the end onto that double crochet that is the three chain stitches, just like we did before, okay? So let's just keep going and we'll see you for round four. Yay! 
Okay, now rounds four and five are the same. All you'll change is the yarn color. So here's how you start round four. Okay, I have now done my slip stitch, which ends round three of this pattern. And I'm going back to the first round, the center round, for my color. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to insert my hook between two of these rounds of three stitches that go into one stitch. And see how big that hole is now? You don't have to look at all on where you have to put your crochet hook to start off your next round. So I'm gonna put this in there and as always, chain three stitches. Make sure you're using the skein in, not the cut in. And go one, two, three. And this makes my first double crochet on the fourth round. And rounds four and five are going to be just the same. And since I'm not having to count two, all I'm gonna do is just do two more double crochet in that same hole between those stitches. And then I'm going to go to the next hole between two sets of three. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, come out, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through the second two. And do three double crochet in each of those holes. And that's what I think is so cool because you're covering up the yarn that was in the round before, so it always looks like, how on earth did they put these together? Something just went out. So, I'm going to do it again. Let me see. Let me get this purple thread out of the way. Yarn over, come in, yarn over, come out. Three bands of yarn on there. Go through the first two, go through the second two. And it gets to where it's really easy. It's really fluid after a while. Your wrist starts to just know where it's going, which is lots of fun. And there's another set of three. I'm gonna do another one, go back in the hole. And you don't even have to think about where the hole is anymore, where you're gonna put your hook in, because it's just there. Shoom, shoom, shoom. And you get faster and faster. Don't get too fast. You don't want to, you know, set the whole thing on fire by just becoming a speed demon. You got to enjoy the process. But it becomes this very little graceful motion that's almost like a dance in your fingers. So I'm going to go for the first two, go for the second two. And that has a knot in it. Shame on it. Do a third one in here, and then I'm going to work my way around the entire circle. And once I've done this, I'll go do the same thing again, just going through between sets of three stitches on the fifth round. But I'm going to change color again to the yellow. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here's the slip knot on the round four. I'm gonna go on ahead and pull this up. I'm gonna change color again to the yellow, just like I did. So it's aqua, yellow, purple, lavender. So I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I'm gonna do what I did on row four, exactly the same, just with yellow yarn. Of course it splits on me. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is do my chain of three and then do two more double crochets in this loop. And 
then I'm going to go all the way around just like I did on round four with that aqua and I am going to slip knot once I've done three crochets in each of those spaces between sets of three crochets and then we'll go on to row six which is the final round. For our sixth and final round in this pattern, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Single crochet. Okay, for our sixth and final round of this half of our crochet bobble, I'm going to do just like we've been doing and go between two of these sets of three but I'm just going, well, now we're going to do a single crochet. So instead of double crochet, you don't do the chain of three, you do a chain of one. Then you're going to not yarn over, you're just going to go back in, grab your crochet yarn on the back of your work, and then you're going to bring yarn over and bring it through both of those. And you're going to do that between every stitch, every double crochet stitch. So again, you go in between two stitches, grab some yarn. You have two things instead of three. You'll yarn over again and bring it through those. So go back in, yarn over, go through two. Go back in, yarn over, go through two. And you're going to do this between every stitch on this entire round. And it's super easy and it won't take any time at all. And once you're done, you'll do another slip stitch just like you've been doing. You've almost yarned over. Once you've done that for a number of rounds, it's hard to stop. It's like, stop me before I yarn over again. So I'm gonna get a little bit more, make this one a little bit smaller because it got a little bit big on me. And I tend to do that. So I'm just gonna take it off of there. See how much bigger that is? Sometimes they just, this tension doesn't stay right and they start messing you up. So see, now it's a little tighter around the hook. So I'm gonna go in, out, yarn over, and I'm done. In, out, yarn over, done. And do this all the way around. And it doesn't take any time to do. Just choo choo choo. And I went on ahead and did it in that next color. And that's going to be the seam color because what we're going to do is once you have finished this round, you have done half of your bobble and you're gonna need to do the exact same thing in the exact same order so that you come out with two sides that look the same. And that way you'll have a symmetrical bobble so you don't discombobulate your bobble. So we're gonna just keep on going And it's, after you do the double crochet, single crochet, just seems like child's play. And you just go between each of those double crochet columns to do your next stitch, and then the space between the two sets of three. And you just pop it through there, and it's just easy peasy. Then we'll do our slip stitch and we'll do a whole second round of this and then you'll be ready to put them together. Okay, so get to single crocheting and get that other half done and then I'll show you how to assemble the whole bobble. Now you've got half of your bobble crocheted. So do the whole thing a second time, and then we're going to show you how to assemble your bobble. So you've made both halves, and now you're going to assemble your bobble. Now, 
These are two halves that are made and I'm going to be putting them around a little glass ornament. But you don't have to do it around a glass ornament. I did this using the same pattern and did it around a styrofoam egg. And it was the same pattern all the way around except for row six I left off completely because the egg was a little bit smaller than a round bobble would be. So I went on ahead and just left that off and sewed it together the way I'm gonna sew this. And this is called, this yarn that I'm using is called Chunky Thread by Lori Holt. So it makes really pretty colors. They're very soft and nice. And I'm gonna get my wonderful little yarn needle out and I love yarn needles because they have this ginormous eye in them so you don't have to use a needle threader if you're as near threaded near sighted as I am you can just poke them right through and I'm gonna take about a yard I could take up to a yard and a half but generally I don't really need more than a yard and I don't want to be wasteful so I'm gonna snip that off and I am going to start up near, since I'm, it wouldn't really matter if I were doing just a styrofoam ball or a styrofoam egg, but because I'm starting with something that has something sticking out between the two sides, I am going to go on ahead and start right up by the opening. And I'm going to tie a little knot like a surgeon's knot, I'm gonna go around twice. It doesn't matter if it all falls apart because I'm going to trim this off and then about a half inch and I'm gonna tuck it in there. And then I'm gonna put this ball right up against it and put the other ball up against it. And the important thing is to make sure that you are going through the same stitch on each side. So this went through the second one on this. So I'm going to go back up through here. And I'm just going to go through both strands of yarn on that. Can you hope you can see it? And I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to go through the next two on both of these like this and this makes a nice little nicely finished little spiral it'll make it look really well done and this went through that one so I'm going through the next one and you match them up all the way around and you don't have to pull them real tight but you can just go through to there, to there. Then the next set. And what this does, if you're watching, it makes this nice little diagonally slanted spiral. Just make sure you don't get caught on that little bobble ornament end. So I'm gonna go through the next one and the one after that. And make sure you go through all four little strands. They'll be going in opposite directions because they're on opposite sides of your ball. And that way you can just go through them really quickly and they go all the way around. And next thing you know, you've got yourself a finished ball. So go ahead and go through the next two and the next two. And as long as you've done these to where they are symmetrical on both sides, you will have the same number of stitches on both of these and they will match up. And then I'll just tie it off and weave in the end or tuck it in and I'm done. And now you've got a bobble. Yay! 
So now you have completed your very first bobble, hopefully the first of many. If you like today's video, please go ahead and click on the thumbs up and follow us if you'd like to see more of what we're doing. And if you'd like to be notified, be sure and click on the little bell so we can let you know when we've got something new for you. I'm Cynthia Hunt with Amarillo Public Library. Keep crocheting!